Something we wanted to be sure to do in this exhibition is to refer to people's everyday experience. As an example of the everyday, we also look to the urban environment, exclusionary architecture, for example. The Kent spike studs, which I'm sitting next to, are stainless steel studs that are meant to deter people from sitting on ledges or homeless from sleeping in certain places. Other products like it are against skateboarding. The city has a whole range of design solutions to prevent certain behaviors. In that way, our movement through the city is confined with a form of violence, a violence of exclusion, which acts disproportionately on some people rather than others. This is a large-scale outdoor print, and it shows Hemben Corsi as an art student with a Band-Aid on his cheek, with a portrait of his lecturer next to him with a Band-Aid on his cheek. Yet on Tembin Kossi's dark skin, it stands out starkly, and on his white lecturer's face, it blends in. So through this artwork, we see revealed in a simple object the assumptions of the object around race. The piece refers both to the superficial violence of a small injury that requires a plaster, and also the long-term, large-scale violence of racial injustice. The philosopher Zizek identifies language as being perhaps violent just in itself, that it constricts our ability to create meaning. But also we find literal violence in many words that we use. Some uh, words conceal violence, like euphemisms for violence, like friendly fire for accidentally killing people on your own side, or collateral damage. We also have words that we use that are literally violent, like deadly, or fierce, or savage. We don't really think of them as violent because they don't refer to violent things in the way we use them. The speculum is an examination instrument usually used in gynaecology. It was brought onto the exhibition through the work of Lisa Godson and what her work identifies is how the history of the speculum's development is connected with slavery, with the abuse of women, and how even in very recent times the speculum has been used against female political activists under the guise of using it as a medical instrument but actually to oppress women. So there are moves to look at the design of the speculum, also to reappropriate it. We actually bought our speculum from a Dublin sex shop, so as an instrument of power it's also used in sexual play. We have a work in a public space, which are some very large-scale reproductions of photographs by Peter Hugo, the South African photographer. It's from a series of works called Permanent Error, and it shows this vast electronics waste dump in Ghana, in which people go through waste computers and other technology that is shipped there from Western countries. And there people make a subsistence living by burning them down to extract the minerals. It causes pollution, people live a very meager existence. It also points out to us where our everyday technologies go. We're intimately connected with these places where violence might be more apparent, but actually that's in our phones and in our computers. That's part of the life cycle of where the minerals come from and where they go to after they die.